It was a dark and raining evening when our trepid hero noticed that my dogs have been playing with my cards again. Stop it, critters. Jeez, you guys think you're so funny. This is Model Cars with Glenn. And I'm here to tell you that my critters are a pain in the butt. Now, uh, let me see where I'm at. Uh, oh, I was going to show you the progress on this record real quick. Remember this guy? I didn't have the boom built and was making it out of that fork. But I figured I'd go ahead and get the boom built. Actually, I was hoping to finish it up, but it's way more work than I thought it was going to be. But how about that, huh? I don't look too bad for a boom made out of that fork from the little gypsy wagon and a bunch of other stuff that I had laying around. Okay, well, I thought I'd show this because it's kind of cool. Now I'm going to show... I like that. That really come out neat. Okay, now I'm going to show a couple of my old models that ain't around no more. We hit the play button. This is a 56 Nomad. It has a real nice paint job on it. And a real pretty motor, too, if it ever gets around to it. And that's a lot of bare metal foil on there. I had bare metal foil there for a while. You know, these things look better on the TV than they do in, on the, I mean, through the camera than they do on the TV. <coughs> yeah, very nice. It had a lot of wiring on it. Got all the fuel lines going on there and throttle linkages. And I put a lot into them back then. And next is, uh, oh, it's another picture of the, of the motor. Yeah, I had a electric whirly jigger back then. This one... Uh, 49 Ford. I called this one the star of the show because I loved it so much. I put everything I could possibly think of on it. And even them scallops came out really nice. Got the the seat belts made for it. And it looked like those pull-out ones. And got the trunk opened up. And uh, you can't see the gate, the switches on the dashboard. They look really cool, a bunch of toggle switches, but you can't see them. They got shifter in there looking cool. And under the hood is this big old SOHC motor. And I'm fixing to pause it. This is a good pause. Now you can see the fuel lines, how they're bent around and come down to the fuel distribution block right there in the front. And there, okay. Move along. Yeah, there's a good shot there of the fuel lines going in that block. That looks real right there. I did a good job on that. If I do say so myself, and that's me saying so. And there is the throttle linkage. I made some cool throttle linkage back then. It wasn't too hard. It's just wire and sheathing. And this is a cool old truck. Neato truck. I filled in the sides of the bed with mutagen and smoothed it out to where it looks like one of them style side beds and chopped the top. I filled in all them holes in the hood too. Them two nostrils in the front and then on the side. Put that rear pan from the 67 Chevelle Pro Street in it. And this is cool. 58, I guess. 58 uh, vet Pro Street with the big old tires and the Big old engine in there. It's a pretty car. I don't know if you get to see the motor or not. I think something happened when this was going from VHS to uh, DVD. I think it got, yeah, that's a cool car. I got, I got another one of these that I want to make into this. I'm trying to recreate a bunch of my old cars that ain't around no more because they was pretty cool the first time, so maybe they'll come out cool the second time. And, yep, didn't even, <laughs> didn't even paint the taillights. What a doink. All that work in the motor. This is 33 Willys. Yeah, I cut away all that I didn't need, the back fenders and the front fenders and the hood. And just kept that little piece of a grill up front. Look at those, uh, that the throttle linkage there on the side of the blower. If you can see it, I don't know. It's not coming in that good. And 
You can see the auto meter. And right there at the back of the door on the floorboard, there's a auto meter computer ignition box all wired in. Got the, got the pull lines from the chute going up to that cool chute release lever. Throttle water uh, fire bottle there. There's the throttle linkage coming from the gas pedal up to the side of the blower and the fuel lines going up. Those come out pretty good. And there's the throttle linkage. Let me see if I can get it right. No. Right there. Throttle linkage on the side of the uh, scoop going down to the fuel distribution throttle thing. And this is a pretty good one. And then I think I showed this one already. I think I started the one with this already. So I'm going to quit it there. And that's about it for those. Uh, for this episode. There's still a bunch more on here. But I don't have to keep showing them. <sighs> okay. Okay. Mutagen. If you take a, a baby food jar. Your regular standard old baby food jar. Fill it halfway full of Bondo, and then put about a quarter of an inch of the fiberglass resin on top of it, and then stir it real good. That's what we call mutagen. The, the thing is, Bondo doesn't stick to plastic all that well. It does stick, but not really good. And this makes it stick. You can feather it out around the edges without it chipping away and stuff. And Bondo will chip away, trust me. But this don't. It sticks. And we've been using, me and my brother have been using this in the body shop for like 40 years. Keep uh, working on cars. Keep rust from coming back through. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, and pinholes and bubbles. When you put it in, you can churn it a little bit. And the bubbles will come up to the top because it's thinner than Bondo. So you you make like a little mold. And pour, the, pour the mutagen in and fill it up. And then just before it gets hard, you can pull it out, take the tape out from around it, and whittle it down and make stuff out of it. I'll show you how to do that. I'm just letting, right now, I'm just letting you know what mutagen is because so many people say, what the heck is mutagen? Uh, originally, it's what turned the turtles into mutant ninja turtles. That's what they called mutagen. I just like the words, so we decided to make ours calling it that. But... On a real car, it holds back rust. It keeps the rust from coming through again. Bondo is porous. Water will soak through it and hold the water against the metal and brrr, bubbly Bondo. But mutagen don't do that, and it will stay because it sticks better because of the fiberglass resin. You don't use the fiberglass hardener, though. You only use the Bondo hardener. That's important because you don't want to use the resin hardener with it. Just the Bondo hardener. And it will be sticky on top when it's drying. But if you if you wait long enough, the sticky will go away. But you really need to get it out of the mold while it's still kind of rubbery to where you can still slice it up with your knife and get it close to the shape. Anyway, I'll show you how to do all that. I'll mix up and make a scoop out of it and show you how to do it. And that's, that's mutagen. And it's about everything I can think about it right now. And let me see. I showed you my record. Uh-oh. This is what I really want to show you today. This is a 60 Corvair. We're... Do you ever see these? I'll tell you where. Found it in a barn. Friend of mine was watching my video and he says, Hey, I got a bunch of them old models you might want. And he went and dug them out of his barn and brought them to me. Let's put on this flashlight and see if it helps. No, not that thing, the flashlight. There you go. Yeah, there you are. The only thing that's been done to this is it's got a thin coat of paint on it. Everything else is just ducky. No glue bomb, no nothing. It's just nice. Except for this one headlight right here. Got a little too much glue behind it. Got it deformed. But I want to make a gasser out of it, so that won't matter. 
I take those lenses off and blank them, blank them out. How about that? When was the last time you saw a model of, you can see it right there on the, oh, wait a minute. Does that say 60? Yeah, that's a 62. Sorry, sorry, didn't mean to lie to you. It's a 62 Corvette. Corvette. It's a Corvair. <laughs> Don't look nothing like Corvette. But how about that, huh? It's the old cheapy one. It's got the one-piece interior with a separate dash. But hey, look at that chassis. Boy, that is pitiful. It's just all molded. It was screws holding it down. Remember those? Remember those? It's from early. And Corvair. Huh? How about that? That's when this, I've been wanting one of this, this is the first generation Corvair, and I've been wanting one of these darn, darn critters forever. Now, what else came out of that barn? Is that all? No! Look at this. Oh, turn it right side up. It doesn't, it doesn't even tell you what car is in here. It's a 1960 scale model compact custom car kit and it says build it all these ways but this is actually a different car this is it this is a corvair that's it stock and this is a lark but on the end of the box it tells you 1960 falcon and let's see what's inside the box is primo untouched unbroken unmessed with Cool as anything, 60 Ford Falcon. All the parts are in there, every one of them, and they're all in awesome shape. The instructions, they're faded, you know, yellow, because heck, it's 60 couple, 60, ah, 60 couple years old, and I just threw the, the chrome sheet on the floor, but check it out, man. There's the grill and everything. Chrome looks good. Everything on here, all the parts are down in the box there. What few there are. Some customizing parts, but check it out. A 1960, this one is a 60. Uh, Falcon. Oh, I want to tear into this and make a gasser out of it. But, you know, it's being so old and antique and in pristine shape. I mean, there ain't nothing wrong with it. It is... It is clean and mean and no caffeine, just the way you like them. And it's in the original box, which is in pretty daggum good shape. I don't know what it's worth, but I'm kind of on the fence about tearing into it and making it into a gasser, you know, because it might be like museum quality crap or something. So you guys tell me in the comments what you think I should do with it. If I should go ahead and make a gasser out of it or preserve it for posterity next i also have running out of room time i'm at 13 minutes already but look at this this is a car let me eh, get this up here this is a 1959 pontiac i think it's a pontiac and, oh i wrote it underneath so i wouldn't remember You'd think I wrote it underneath. It faded away. Huh. That's odd. Anyway, this is a 59 Pontiac. Or it could be an Oldsmobile. It is. It is an Oldsmobile. See that in the grill? It says Oldsmobile. That's right. It ain't in the right box. But it's very cool. And if you can see right here, it says, it says Johan or Johan, whichever you want to call it. But it has a little bit of glue damage around there. Where so I glued the fender skirts on, and it's got a little glue damage back here and here and here, and on the other side. But all that is repairable. I could totally restore this, and it's got the glass, which is in good shape. So, should I tear into it and make it a cool car, or should I preserve it for posterity in this cool box? It says right there on the end, 58 Pontiac hardtop, but this ain't the right box. But it is a Johan kit. I got just another minute to show you one more thing real quick, and then I got to go. This ain't it. This uh, 60 Chevy truck ain't what I was wanting to show you. It's what's in the box. This is a trailer kit that came with it. Still in the bag. 
There's 1960 air inside this bag. And it's complete. All the parts are in here. So, y'all let me know. Should I leave this in the bag? Or should I take it out and do something with it? Donate it to a museum? Trade it to somebody? I don't know. But it's all barn find stuff. And it's all mine. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, give me a like and a subscribe and a comment, and I will talk to you later. Barton Fine, bye.